Hey everyone, Dr. D here, and in this lab I'm going to show you uh, the proper use of pipettes. So oftentimes in the lab we'll want to, you know, transfer known volumes of solution from one container to another. So for example, I might want to transfer a known amount of uh, this pink solution from this test tube to these other test tubes. So uh, to do that, I'll need to use pipetters. Before I tell you about the pipetters though, let me make something clear. This right here is my Nalgene water bottle and this is a liter bottle, okay? So that means if you look at the top here, right there, you'll notice that this has a thousand milliliters. So what's a liter? This bottle is a liter bottle and a liter is actually 1000 milliliters. And so when you're dealing with science, a lot of times you're not dealing with liters of stuff. You're dealing with test tubes, right? And the amount of solution that's in a test tube is nowhere near a liter. So what we do is we measure things out in milliliters, which is a thousandth of a liter. So to do that, we've got different pipettes. We've got thin ones, okay? This here is for measuring out up to one milliliter. So you see how thin it is? It's thin because it's called the one milliliter pipette. By the way, if I ever forget if this is the one milliliter pipette, how would I figure that out? Let me show you real quick. I know this is the one milliliter pipette because uh, first of all, it's got uh, the tapered side here. That's the pointy end for going into solution. Then on the other side, you've got the flat side here. That side is uh, to go into the pipe pump. So let me show you real quick how you can figure out that this is the one ml pipette. Uh, hold it to this, hold it sideways. Look near the top, okay? And look what it says right here. Do you see that? Hopefully you do. One, it says one ml. So you see that one ml? It says one ml at the top. Therefore, I know that this is the one ml pipette. What does that mean? That means if you suck up solution, if you suck up, suck up, suck up, suck up, suck up, suck up, all the way up to the zero mark, you see this zero mark right here, uh, if you suck up to right there, that is one ml, okay? So this is the one ml pipette. How do I know I have one ml? That means I suck up all the way up to here. So uh, if I wanted uh, 0.9 ml, I would suck up solution to here, 0.8, I would suck up to here, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, you get the point, so <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Um, and here, if I want 0.1 ml, 0.1 ml, I would suck up to where my nail is, right there. And I know the numbers on these are confusing. By the way, notice how the numbers on here are confusing. This says 0.9. But if I suck up solutions to there, I only have 0.1 in there. Just be aware that for whatever reason, they like to put these scales backwards on the pipettes. So 0.9 is actually not 0.9. It's actually 0.1. The reason it says 0.9 is they're assuming that you started at zero. And if you start at zero and you go down to this 0.1, that means you have actually aliquoted 0.1 milliliters. I, I don't know why they do it this way. It's actually more confusing than what it's worth. Um, but just be aware of that. A lot of students, I'll say, uh, you know, suck up uh, 0.1 ml and they'll suck up all the way up to here. That's actually 0.9 ml. If you want 0.1 ml, you want down here. So just be aware that all of these are backwards. Their scales are backwards. So, uh, so anyway, this is the 1 ml pipette. And if you suck up to the zero, you have 1 ml. This one here that's a little thicker, notice how this one's thicker than this one, this one's thicker. Uh, again, it's got the pointy end, it's got the flat end, and this is called the 5 ml pipette. How would I know that? Well, again, look at the top, and look what it says right there. It's the 5 ml pipette. So I know that, if again, if I suck up solution all the way to this zero mark, right where my nail is, right? That is 5 ml. So if I want 4 ml, what do I do? I go down to the 1. Again, the scale's backwards. If I want uh, 3 ml, I go down to the 2. If I want 2 ml, go down to the 3. 1 ml, so that's 1 ml. If I want 1 ml, it's right there. If I want 5 ml, 5 milliliters, I go up to the 
zero. Okay, so that's the 5 ml pipette. And the last one we deal with in most labs is this thickest one. Notice how this is the thickest one right here. This guy's called the 10 ml pipette. Again, why? How do I know that? Turn it sideways, look near the top. What do I see? 10 ml. It's the 10 ml pipette. See, it tells you at the top what it is. And what does that mean? Again, where is 10 ml? That means if I suck up all the way, I keep sucking up all the way to the zero mark way up here, that's 10 ml. And how do I get 9 ml? That you guessed it. I, uh, 9 ml is going up to this one, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So if I want one ml, I can actually do it with this pipette, but I'd have to go only this high. Okay, so now you know what these are. These are the pipettes, but we need a tool to be able to suck the solution into these pipettes, right? So to suck to suck solution into these pipettes, we've got these pipe pumps over here. These are called pipe pumps. And there's a blue one usually in most labs, and there's a green one, right? There's a green one. Now, this isn't just because some people like blue and, and some people like green. Let me tell you something. There's a reason why these are different colors, and it has nothing to do with color preference. It has to do with calibration. This green one is calibrated for bigger volumes. Does that make sense? So what that really means is this green one is for the big 10 ml pipette and the big 5 ml pipette. So when you're using these bigger pipettes, you're using this pump, this pipe pump, this green one, okay? You do not want to use the green one with the 1 ml pipette. You see this thin guy, this 1 ml tiny pipette? Sometimes we'll have 2 ml pipettes as well, but these little tiny guys, these are not going to work well with the green pipe, pipe pump. We want to use the blue one. Does that make sense? You need to be aware of this. Blue pipe pump, 1 ml or 2 ml pipettes. Green pipe pump, 5 ml, 10 ml pipettes, bigger pipettes. So how do we go ahead and use these pipettes? So again, look here, I have a pink solution of some sort, which may or may not be a uh, strawberry drink. Uh, so this right here is the solution that I want to aliquot into these other test tubes, right? But I want to make sure I put set amounts into each. Let's say I want to put 10 ml into this pipette, uh, into, uh, sorry, into this test tube here, and I want to put one ml into this test tube here. How would I do that? So uh, I want to put 10 ml into this tube. First of all, I could label these tubes if I want to. You see these here, I've got here, these are called China markers, okay? And they're great, they're basically wax pens, and wax is great for writing on glass. So I'm gonna show you here, you can actually write, like this is tube, I'm not pushing hard enough. This could be tube one, you see that? And um, this guy can be tube two. So I'm gonna write tube two there. And the great thing about these wax pens is that it, it rubs off. Like you can you can actually wash this off pretty easily. So don't use Sharpies or anything like that when you're writing on uh, test tubes. Make sure you're using your, your China markers. Okay, so here's tube one, here's tube two. I want 10 milliliters in tube one one milliliter in tube two. How do I how do I accomplish that? So how do I use these pumps? So let's do the 10 ml first. Again, I'm gonna use the green pie pump with the 10 ml pipette, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. Now what I need to do is not put the pointy end into the pipette, obviously. I wanna put the blunt end into the pipette, but I, I need you to be aware of something. If you, if you go ahead and start jamming these two into one another really hard with a lot of force, well, this is made out of glass. What do you think is going to happen with something that's made out of glass and you're putting a bunch of force on it like that? Exactly. It's going to break right here. It's going to break and, and, you, and it's going to break in half and you're going to poke yourself, right? I've actually, unfortunately, had a student do that one time and it wasn't nice. Uh, you know, student needed a bandage. Luckily, it wasn't worse, but you need to be aware that if you're putting glass into plastic and you're applying force, there's a chance of breakage. So you have to be really careful. So what you should do, uh, if you wanna be extra careful, here's what I recommend. Take a napkin, you know, one of these lab napkins, okay, or two, 
All right, take a lab napkin, wrap it around up here. This way, if the glass does break, uh, it's contained inside of the napkin. It's not gonna come out and poke you. So wrap a napkin around the pipette, choke up. Notice how I'm choking up. I'm not holding it way down here, am I? I'm choking up, you know, not all the way, but right here. And then what I'm gonna do is apply very, and look how much I'm pushing it in. I'm not even pushing it in that far. I'm applying light force and I'm, and I'm just twist and push a little bit. I didn't even have to put twist and push that much. And look, when I tug, it doesn't come back out. Now I'm set to do my experiment. You see that? This is great. All right, so I want to dispense 10 ml. Again, that would be going up to the zero point here. I've got my syringe all the way down. So I'm gonna place the tip of the pipette into the solution. Then I'm gonna roll my thumb, roll this wheel. So here's my solution. I place the tip into the solution. And once my tip is in the solution, I roll my thumb. Okay, I'm rolling my thumb, making sure that my tip is in the solution. And you can see here, sorry for uh, messing with the camera a little bit, but you can see here as I roll my thumb, the solution does start to advance up the graduated pipette here. Now look here. All right, so when I take the solution out, notice how my notice how my solution is right above the zero mark. Uh, do you guys know what a meniscus effect is? Let me let me explain that right now. All right, so take a look here. You see, there's a curve forming uh, of solution. the The solution is curving. That's called the meniscus, and you want the bottom of that curve, the bottom of the meniscus, to line up with the point you want. So here I see that my solution's higher than where I want it. I, it's higher than 10 ml. It's about 10.1 ml. So uh, let me go ahead and fix that. All right, now my solution's perfect. You see how the bottom of the curve is right there at the zero mark? That's where I want it. That, that means that I have exactly 10 ml, 10 ml inside of this. And so how do I distribute the solution? Again, I'm gonna go ahead and place the tip into the new tube, tube one. And then again, I can either push this button or uh, advance the wheel the opposite way as before. So let me show you what happens when I push the button. I'm gonna push the button and it just starts to drain. Now look, there's a little bit left. There's usually, see that tiny bit left? That tiny bit can be expelled by rolling the wheel. If I roll the wheel the other way, it will expel that tiny bit that's left. Look, see the tiny bit that's left? I'm rolling the wheel this time, not pushing the button. You see that? And that really got everything out of there. And now I've got 10 ml, I've got exactly 10 ml of this strawberry beverage inside of this tube. Now, if I want one ml in this tube, am I gonna use the 10 ml pipette? I could, you know, I could, because if I want one ml, I'd have to go up to the 0.9, but it's not the best for measuring out one ml. You know what is better for measuring out one ml? How about the 1ml pipette that's actually designed for measuring out 1ml. Uh, so this is probably the most accurate one to use. You could also use the 5ml pipette to measure out 1ml. In this case, you would go up to the 4 mark. But let's use the proper 1ml pipette. Again, how am I going to attach this to the blue pipette? Am I going to put the 1ml pipette with the green pipette, with the green pipe pump? No. So here's what I do. Wrap my napkin, choke up push very gently as I twist. I'm not pushing it in very far, am I? I'm just pushing it in until it settles and you know, you could give it a little tug, it shouldn't pull out, right? So again, if this is the one ml pipette, I wanna suck up all the way to this zero mark to have one ml. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, I place the tip into the solution. I roll my wheel up, you see how it's sucking up, it's sucking up, it's sucking up. Uh, and now I've gone well past, oh no, let's see where I'm at. I'm a little bit past where I want to be. You see, I'm just north of where I want to be. So let's get it where I want. I want to bring it down a little. Remember the bottom of the meniscus right on the line? Am I where I want to be? 
Ooh, I'm a little bit low. Let's go back up a little and down. I'd say that's about perfect right there. So I'm going to place this 1ml into tube 2. And again, I'm going to push this button. And when I push the button, I expel everything except a tiny bit. How do I get rid of that tiny bit? That's right. This time I roll the wheel. And so I'm going to roll the wheel and all of it comes out. And that is 1 ml of solution. 1 ml of solution, 10 ml of solution. If I want to measure out 1 ml, I use this thin pipette. If I want to measure out between 1 and 5 ml, I use the 5 ml pipette. If I want to do between 5 and 10, I use the 10 ml pipette. You get the point. Now, what do I do with these tips once I'm done with them? By the way, these are glass pipettes. They are not disposable. We are not throwing them away. We're reusing them. So, uh, once you're done, by the way, before I tell you what to do, when you're done with it, what you should realize is one pipette, one solution. Just remember that. Don't use this same pipette for this soda, this orange, uh, or sorry, this strawberry soda, and then go ahead and use it for something else. If you use a pipette for one type of solution, you should not use the same pipette for another solution. That's called cross-contamination. You know why? Because look what's still left in this. You see, no matter what I did, I still have a little bit of solution left in this pipette. It's just going to happen. So if I were to dip this into a second solution, a different solution, I'm going to contaminate that solution. Okay. So how do I get rid of this pipette? I very gently twist and pull. Okay. So here's my pipette. I can twist and pull my 1 ml pipette as well. You see I've got all my pipettes and the lab is going to have a receptacle where you can place these and usually you're going to put the tip pointing up into these metal cylinders for cleaning and for further use. Okay, So do not throw these away. Put these in the proper designated area. And that's how we use pipettes. That's how we use pipettes and the pipe pumps. So I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions below and have a good one.